Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having a fabulous day. And as always, autodidactic means to be self-educated. And we need to be self-educated because if we're not, the only choice we have left is to believe what other people tell us. And when we look into his story, we understand pretty quickly that what they're telling us about our past is completely untrue and just made up. So today I wanted to jump into a bit of that and to show you uh, yeah, just how made up this story is. Because uh, when we look around, the actual physical evidence that we find is completely different to the story we're given. So today we're going to have another look. This is kind of a part two to one I did about Arizona. And this one we're going to look at the USA in the 1880s again. Well, between 1865 and 1880, they say this, these uh, photos were taken. And it's Texas, California, Arizona and New Mexico. So let's jump in. Alright, so let's start here. This is Austin, Texas. That's right, Austin, Texas, 1870s, uh, around there. And this uh, photo says the capital before the fire. And as you can see, we have a big, uh, you know, what we're, called, what we're told is a Greco-Roman style building here. Big dome on the top. Uh, might have a roof on, but... It's not very high if it does. Another building out the background there that looks pretty much exactly the same. See the two bits? No dome. And these walls everywhere. Okay, so if you're moving into a new, a new you know, uh, country, new state, you can see there's nothing here pretty much. Why would you build these walls? And why would you build something this huge? And when you did, why would you build a second one? Uh, you know, this this was found, guys. This was already here. And this is it after the fire. Uh, so the roof and dome gone. Uh, and just look at these walls. See how we have these just equidistant, you know, what are these, like support kind of things. Uh, it looks very old world. We've got a bit of, you know, a bit of a wall sticking here, a bit of a pillar sticking out of the ground. Got someone down here checking out the photo, the photographer. And yeah, and as you can see, these trees, you know, it's not, not a lot of vegetation around. Uh, so how long was this building sitting here for, I wonder? This one, uh, looking, you know, this looks like a church. Got our portal, which we see everywhere. This shape we see everywhere on top of buildings. And, you know, this one sort of still standing and this one didn't do so well. Uh, just completely destroyed. You can see it's brick under a facade or under a, you know, a skim coat of something. But yeah, that looks like brick. Uh, this is all just rock <laughs> everywhere, just lying around. But I mean, that does actually look like a red brick, doesn't it? It's, don't know why they're laid on top of each other. Maybe that was filled in later. Because some of this stuff does look like it's rock, you know, like it's just sort of rough rock, I don't know. Maybe that's how they were building it, but definitely, you know, the architectural style is the same as everywhere else. And of course they had this. Okay, they, they want us to believe that they built this. Uh, just whacked it up, of course, there's nothing like, you know, construction photos or anything. We get these nice photos, but... Nothing of the building them, you know, but they, they still claim them. But this clearly has no roof. Clearly no roof on this. Okay, we've got all these other buildings in the background, but this is just the, a cathedral that you would see anywhere in the world. Now, I don't know if that's still got the glass in it. A bit different to the ones we normally see. Stained glass there. And of course, this you'll see it's, it hasn't got too much facade on it really, has it? You know, it hasn't got all the gaudy stuff and all the statues and, you know, all that kind of stuff, the garlands and bits and pieces. Um, all that antiquitech seems to have been taken off or destroyed. 
So we just really got a shell here. And 1870, so like uh, in the last video I was talking about, you know, the West Coast here, the narrative is that it wasn't really settled. Uh, I was a bit earlier in California because they had, you know, the gold rush. Uh, so what, what are they, gold rush? Was it 45ers or 85s? I can't remember. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 1848 was the gold rush in California. So basically nothing there before then, uh, cause the story of North America, you know, they hit the East Coast first and then sort of made their way across. Uh, so yeah, the narrative is there's nothing there until 18, you know, late 1840s, 48. So let's say 1850. And that was in California. When you get out to, you know, Texas and New Mexico and Arizona, it's a bit later. They're talking 18, you know, they're talking tiny populations. Then there was the Mexican-American War. I think that was around the 1870s, 1860s, you know, around the Civil War when they were just killing all the natives, basically. It's just a, a narrative for their, um, you know, for their war and their genocide, basically. But yeah, so there was no one here uh, till about the 18, you know, 70s. Even if we go 1848, guys, this here is, what, 1870s. So it's say 25 years later, a bit more. And so the narrative would mean that they would have had to build this, you know, when they got there at, at the earliest, and we're stretching it to say 1848 here in, uh, I think this is Arizona. It's not California. And then it's dilapidated, broken down, roofless within what, under 30 years. That's the story they want you to believe. And look at the size of this thing. You can see there's a person in here. Tiny little person. And of course, you know, the size, right? How many? Well, we know we have uh, the skeletons and the mummies of giants all over the USA and South America, everywhere. And again, you know, here we have some fine people standing around for a photo op in front of this. And how old does this look? Dome, got a little uh, bit on top. Uh, again, just looks like half the roof's gone. Looks like there could have been another dome here. This looks like it would have been taller. All the spies and stuff just gone. And then uh, just, you know, the whole town's built out with old world buildings, dirt roads, wagons, and a few people hanging out. And the story is that they built this. Ah, uh, yeah, so inherited is probably a better word. And here we have our top hat, top hat man standing up for his photo op in front of his found building. Here we go. It looks like there's no windows, so they've just put some bars in them. You know, here we have our porticos. They look like they're... can't get any closer, but see how it looks like it's got that shell sort of shape? Uh, columns, you know, the arches, the whole thing, the keystone. And you can see how, how, you know, worn and dilapidated it is up here. And then down here, a bit better where it didn't get hit so hard, but yeah, big building. And this guy here, no doubt was the architect. Uh, th is that, yeah, I think that's the same building. Uh, horse and cart rocked up. Uh, so there's two people in this town, or maybe maybe that was a top hat man's cart. We don't know. And look, there is a spire. Woohoo! One left. Yeah, old world, and you can see this is even. I've uh, got some facading on it. A bit of artwork for us. This is views in and around San Antonio by Doa and uh, what's that say? Jet Jefferson photographers. The Alamo is the first and most important of Texas missions. After several changes to the location as well as the name of the mission, it was finally transferred to its present location where it took the name of Alamo or Popular Church. The cornerstone of the building was laid on the 8th, May 1744. Wow, that is early. Uh, a slab in front of the wall bears the date 1787. Of course, <laughs> it ceased to be used as a parish church in 1798. So none of those dates have any relevance to each other. Why would it be 
laid, like the cornerstone in 1744, and then the slab on the front wall bears the date 1787. What? The siege of the Alamo by Santa Anna in 1886 is the most interesting and important event which occurred in our historical city. Colonel Travis with 145 men held the fort for 10 days against the Mexicans, variously estimated at from 1,500 to 6,000 men. So someone wasn't that good at counting. And again, this is probably just a narrative. You know, they've moved in, stolen people's land and property. The people come back to get it, and of course, they're now the savages attacking when all they want is what is theirs. And here we go. USA, West Coast, 1870s. Nice little canal here with a house on it. Looks like the Riviera. Ah, some peeps down on the river. Posing for a photo op, of course. Not much there. Looks like there's a big town or city over here, though. And here again. And this is the Mission de la Conception. Or so they say. Nice big towers up here. Ah, uh, we've got some Antiquitech that uh, lasted through. Of course, they've put their little crosses on the top here. Portals. <laughs> no. Pyramids, doors, columns, the whole thing. And then like quite a big building into the background there by the looks of it. And yeah, 1870s. Just just whacked up. Uh, here's another view of it. You can see these arches. Looks like they've been filled in. And painted to windows. So it's been retrofitted. Looks very old. You can see that it's sort of worn off here. And you can see the stone. And I don't know what this is. Just a big rock. Big melted rock of something. But yeah, I mean, look at these towers. Just the same as what we see everywhere. Big dome in the background as well. Of course, of course. And this is what they were building. This is the inside of the dome. And of course, we've never seen anything like this before, have we? I mean, come on, look at this. They want us, you know, to believe that this was built. We're talking 1870s. And look at this, how disheveled, disheveled it is already because... Remember, this is a church, their place of worship, you know, they tell us they build things like this, this big, you know, just for the glory of God, because they've got no tools and no skills, so it's only the glory of God. And then, look at this, looks like they found a bit of Antiquitech. Uh, now, I have some information on these kind of religious artifacts, and yes, there will be a video coming soon all about that. And about how, you know, religion. I mean, what a place to hide Antiquitech, right? It's all for the glory of God. God the L. L. Electricity. Of course, of course. Look at this. I mean, how old does that look? Just, this looks just worn away. That looks copper. Still got Antiquitech up there. I'm not... It doesn't look like it may be the building we're just looking at from a different angle, but it didn't look this destroyed on, on the other photo. Look at this. Look how big this doorway is. Again, they've found many, many giant remains all throughout the Americas. Many legends of them as well by the uh, yeah, Indians, tribal people, <laughs> whoever they are. It's, uh, yeah, the story is just... Just, it's almost just up for grabs at the moment, isn't it? And again, more uh, internal domes. This time they've got a bit more stuff. Got their little statue of Mary because we should not worship false idols. Oh, so it says. Not, of course, that I'm saying Mary is false. Uh, it's the whole idol thing, isn't it? You know, making idols to worship. That's what he was. Well, the book was getting at he, the, they, the energy. Is that, looks like a head up there, but here we get, you know, again, this, they're telling us this is 1870s America, and just look at this window, look at this facade. And again, you can see this is all pieces. See the, the join lines here, and here, and here, uh, there, so there'll be one there. So this is all pieces. I mean, you can see the edges of them, right? So it's like, how do they make this? Are these made from moulds or something? Mass-produced somewhere and then stuck on? 
stuck on, like stucco. I don't know. But I mean, definitely very glamorous. Because, you know, they, they had an extra, you know, couple of weeks to just whack that on the outside because they were just, you know, starting a new country. Ah, uh, so that must be the same building, but look how destroyed, like just how old and worn it looks. Yeah, that bit's just fallen off. No roof. This wall here just all smashed. Overgrown. Of course, someone's come in and put this amazing high-tech fence in. And over here, a few more. Bit of antiquitech for you. See the roof? Yep. Reeds are plenty. Okay, that's a whole shack. Okay, well, look at that. Perfect. This is what they can build. Look at this. This is a uh, wattle and daub, I think is what they call this, where you get the sticks and you kind of weave them through. That's the wattle, and daub is normally, normally you sort of smear mud into it. Uh, yeah, so that's what they can build, but yeah, we're told that they built this as well, and they just happened to age, you know, 500, 600, 1,000 years in in a 20-year period. And again, someone, you know, see, they've found this, so they've locked it. Now it's theirs. Even just look at that door, how ornate it is. But how old is this? Are they scary Phoenician faces? I don't know. And just this dude hanging out. Little kid. Waiting for his legs to grow so that then he can get off that seat. And it's the return of Top Hat Man. And he's checking out, he's obviously the architect checking out his handiwork. And as you can see, they clearly built this stone masonry building. Because here they're just stringing up a bit of, you know. A few bits of wood, bit of tree, chuck a floor in there. Why not? Uh, so, I mean, these are photos, guys. This is what they did. Right? They got there. They found it. No roof. All broken. And they started fixing it and putting it back together. Putting in the floors. Putting on the roofs. Look at this archway here, it's been filled up. So remember we saw the ones on the outside, they'd filled up and put windows in, so they're doing it here. They're just coming in and and uh, just, yeah, renovating them. Uh, renovate actually means, obviously it's renovate, but if you're looking to renovate, the word novate is to do with uh, contracts and it's to do with uh, tenants. And so when you renovate, you basically uh, renegotiate your terms with your uh, with the people who own the building or are in the building. And so basically, if you rock up and you find the building and there's no one there, then you can just write up a piece of paper, apparently. Call it a con, tract. You know, what is a tract? That's like a rut, right? It's like a... a Something that leads you somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, you get your contract and you say, hey, who owns this building? Um, I'm taking possession now. And when no one appears and says no, then you just take it. And it's called renovating. And again, you can see these lines. See how it's all like it's just been put on in pieces? Prefabbed. I mean, this is obviously looking a bit more old world like we see normally, the statues. But still this... Look at this, we've got oranges and apples and things rather than all the leafy stuff. It's still looking like that shell uh, kind of look. We do see that a lot in uh, Vedic stuff as well, though, obviously. You know, with hydras and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, USA, middle of nowhere, 1870. And when you're building buildings, it's always good to build half a building. Or, or build it. And then you smash the roof off. Because that way you get to build it twice and you become a better artisan, a better builder. I mean, this is just a... Come, I mean, this is 100% proof, guys. Look at it. And look at that. That brick. Look at that. That's brick. One those, and look at that roof. That's one of those brick arched roofs. Oh, I've got a door going in here. You know, this is obviously that's still that same place. And obviously they're, they're going to say this destruction was probably from the the Alamo or, you know, the Civil War or the American-Mexican War or whatever ever war you want to put in there. As long as they can say there was destruction, then they can explain away all this stuff. 
And that is what they've been doing. But the gig is up because we have the evidence. Look at this. Old and destroyed. And I mean, come on, look at this. Look at this. Old world building. Uh, I mean, we see this everywhere, these multi, multiple sort of arch buildings. Of course, these ones go straight into the ground because I guess they had dwarves and pygmies living downstairs. Giants upstairs, upstairs, downstairs, right? Look at this. This, this has just been, just fallen out this big part of the wall. Still got our tower with our copper domes. Oh, nice sort of hole there. I'm not sure what that is. And here we go. They've built their little, their little covered bit here. That's what they can do. Oh, but they've built this. And it's just, you know, no, no trees or anything around. It's just sort of, Nothing. Is that a person? Don't know. I mean, this place just got smashed. It looks like it, it got hit by something. It's just, it's just broken walls and things. But who knows? It could just be, you know, that's what happens when you sit in the desert for a thousand years. So quite clearly this, you know, look at that. It looks like it could be in Europe. Quite clearly built by, uh, you know, different people than who turned up and you know could could possibly and most probably be the people that were there when they turned up you know that the uh, native inhabitants but I think that you know a lot of these places were wiped out the natives you know never sort of got back to this level and so they were probably you know living with these as ruins not really knowing how to how to re-roof them or anything because if you can't put a big roof on it, then what, you know, what use is a building like this really, I guess. Uh, but obviously they're related to the people. They're probably the ancestors of the people who did build this. Unless this was built, you know, this could have been built by a giant race as well. You know, there's just so many, you know, we're starting to learn so many different races, different beings and stuff uh, from different realms. Another shot, just to show it's quite a big building there. And again, imagine this with, you know, a big pitched roof on it. A few extra towers. I mean, cathedral, right? And here's a different building again. Uh, this, you know, this looks like a... The buildings we get told, are, you know, train stations and things with these arches. Looks like they've been filled in. And this is just, it's still got a bell hanging. I wonder if they put that in. But look at this tab. This is just destroyed. This bit here. Looks like it was part of something a bit bigger. And here's the architect, look at that, having a look at his work, saying, what a good job, look what I've done. I think he forgot to finish this, so, and then the antenna there, and of course, fill all this in, and they've got the little door to get in here. And here's another photo opportunity, Des Itats Unis. I don't know what that means. But here's we can see they're all standing out just like this little tiny remains of the front of a big, you know, what we're told, a cathedral or churches. This guy having a look inside. Nice old archway. Which has survived. And look at this, just just a wall. They're all hanging out. This dude, this guy. All right, he is doing the strutting pose. Woohoo! And yeah... So we've got our like, you know, tall dudes with hats on in the front strutting their stuff and then in the back we just got the locals, I guess. And of course what every new country needs, a half-built, completely demolished 
bit of a building. <laughs> so this is obviously the same bit, and you can see it's literally just the front of what was once, you know, a multi-story large building and very ornate doorway. And this guy's just like, yeah, I'm the architect. See, I've got a top hat. Got a top hat, mate. Makes everything all right. And <laughs> these guys think that they're making an album cover. And here's the band hanging out. And this must be the lead singer popping in the middle here. <laughs> Definitely not a photo opportunity. Uh, so there you go. Health and safety would be losing their crap at the moment. Seeing humans actually just, you know, doing stuff without worrying about what might go wrong because we can often you know think about what can go right it is a choice it's a face look that got a mouth big tongue eyes and nose and he's even got like a crown on his head little horns <laughs> There we go. The face of architecture. Okay, and this says Mission of San Antonio or the Alamo. Uh, the first and most, most important of these missions is that of the Alamo. The name and locations of the mission were frequently changed. Really? That's not like history. It was commenced on the Rio Grande in 1703, so they're saying it was a building down on the river. But then, 31 years later, they picked it up and transferred it to its present location. So that's why it's so broken, they just mustn't have transported it very well. You know, when they were carrying it down the road, they must have shook it a bit. Uh, when it took the name of Alamo, the Alamo was captured by Santa Ana. Sunday, March 6th. 1836. The mission is situated on the left bank of the river, about two miles below the city. And so 1700s, they're saying this was all done. So that's how they've pushed back the narrative, no doubt. Uh, St. Francis of the Sword was first located on the Medina River and removed to its present location, eight miles below the city in 1836. So they love moving these buildings around, even though they're huge brick buildings, they just move them. Because, you know, why not? Buildings like this, you just move them. They're in the wrong spot. You know, apparently you just get someone on each corner of this wall, lift it up, church comes with it, off you go down the road. Easy, easy. Nice domes on top there. Oh, ock. Oh, must be an auction house. Uh, what is that? That's very strange, but yeah, and look how old this looks. Just, just looks so old. And old world. Uh, here's a drawing, Santa Clara College, 1831. And when you build these things, you always have to have your clock and bell tower. I said clock and bell tower, guys. Don't be rude. And here we go again. For our photo op. Just stand around and yeah, you sit on the horse because you've got the biggest hat. Oh yeah. Uh, look at how old and disheveled this building looks. And this is what they love to do in Australia too. They find these old buildings and they build these wooden verandas around them to change the whole look of them. But if you rip this off, you just get those buildings with the uh, rectangle windows, all symmetrical that you see everywhere, uh, especially around the water a lot, down near the, near the water sides, you see them a lot. And yeah, just do, I mean, even the kids, top hats, you know, suits, why not? Just mud everywhere. Mud, mud, mud. 
Again, now this was built by Wilson, because obviously this must be Wilson. Uh, he doesn't really know how to level land off, because that, as you can see, is two-story at the front and not quite at the back. And yeah, it's just, look at this, plaster falling off everywhere already. And just, like the whole town's built out. Look at it down here. 1870s. And of course, they say this was built out, you know, 100 years before with the Alamo and all, with the Alamo and all that, but 100 years? What, from brand new to, to what we've seen? These disheveled, broken buildings? Because that doesn't make a lot of sense. Look at this. These almost look like modern houses. Of course, they are. They're flying their flag, as UAP said. The false flag. This is not a photo op at all. But again, you know, just these dirt tracks, but you know, buildings up and down, windows into the ground. It's just false narrative 101. Look at this old canals. See, the train tracks were already there too. They've just been uncovered. As with most of the town. Uh, views of California. Okay, so we're in California now. There we go. Tracks there. Yeah. Old world building. Uh, sorry, wall here. See that? Something's been walled off. Maybe it was a salad. And here we have the workers. And of course, as you will see, 80% of these workers are children. Orphans. Uh, so these obviously all look Chinese. And of course, there is a narrative of the Chinese coming in you know, for gold. And I guess it's California, so we must be around the gold. Uh, gold strike area. But yeah, that's the thing, you know, Chinese seem to be everywhere with the gold rushes. They always come with the gold rushes. So, you know, Chinese Tartaria, world civilization, were they already there? Were they already there? Is this just, is this just a narrative, this whole, I mean, we know the whole gold rush is a made up narrative. Oh, but yeah, the dispersion of people and populations are probably made up as well. And just a shot here of a lone broken down building up on the hill. As you do, and this is, look at this, so this is from the past, already broken down, big brick building, stone, masonry, and a couple of hundred years later, the, the technologically advanced people come in and this they build their little wooden bridge. No stone arch, just, just a few bits of wood. Another photo of sitting out the front of a completely broken down. Look at the inside there. It's just, and I mean, look, look how old this looks. This thing, that's pretty cool. Domes, of course. Antiquitec. This looks like it's lost its dome, doesn't it? It's half the size of this one. But look at that, right? Carmel Mission, Monterey, California, founded June 3rd, 1770 by Ginepero Serra. And this seems to be the story. They sort of say in the 1700s, these Spanish people went through and, you know, just whipped up all these buildings really quickly. And then they all left. And then a hundred years later, people came back and found them all just destroyed. Yeah. And here it is again. And I think we found our architect... Oh, and see, he is. He's walked in. He's gone, hang on. Done about this wall. So he's leaned some wood up against it so it doesn't fall over. So clearly he's the architect. And bells, like these bells. I wonder if they're old world. You know, did they get brought in? You know, did, did this guy have, you know, the foundry uh, capabilities, you know, the skills and the, uh, you know, the production center to make these bells? 
and to get them up here, and to make the wheels, and all the hoists, and all the ropes, and everything. Or was it just sitting there for a long time? I had a picture of Chinatown. And again, you know, whole Chinese populations. But again, look, all kids, were they all just brought in? Who knows? Were they there already? You know, there's so many questions about the dispersion of populations. And of course, it, in the end, doesn't really matter. Race doesn't exist. That's all just a something that was um, brought into the narrative, into the play, into the show to divide us, to try and show us that we're different. And of course, it's not us that are different. Humans are all the same. It's the parasites that are different. They're the ones that are against us. Look at this. Look at this. What is that? Is that melted? Is that some kind of plant? I don't know. It looks... That just looks like... I don't know. It's just melted building, is it? I mean, what's that? No idea what that is. Got uh, people up here saying patty cake by the looks of it. And, like, yeah, look at this. Doorway. Looks like a window, I don't know, something there, into this. I mean, look at that. That kind of looks like someone left their ice cream in the sun, doesn't it? Ah, uh, and unfortunately, that's as far as I can get into this photo, but... Uh, <laughs> do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Look at this. Nice and square. Just, I mean, what is that? And then, of course, something more up on the hill here. So, yeah. Uh, it looks like everywhere got hit, you know. Northern Africa got hit with something. And that goes right up through Middle East, Asia, and up into Russia. Uh, Middle of Australia got hit, wiped out, blast zone. Gobi Desert area, South America, and then, yeah, obviously up around Utah, Arizona, all this sort of area as well. And look at this. And we see these sort of archways everywhere, don't we? Natural formations, they tell us. But what do you reckon? I don't know. Not sure what this guy reckons. He's just like, I'm the king of the castle. All right, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the rest of the photos, I'll leave the link for this book below. The rest of the photos are just sort of trying to show us the, <laughs> the miners and the gold rush, I think. I mean, is it, look at this. He's got his little wheelbarrow. Not quite sure how to pick it up. So they're just like, I just grab the handles. It'll be an action shot. Uh, this guy, he doesn't understand action shot. He's just posing. But they do have their tech here. It's, it's a piece of wood. So you can slide stuff down the hill. These, these guys are trying to slide, but they're not getting it down here. And they're all ending up down here. Uh, but it, but that's a pretty good professional-looking mining operation, if you ask me. And, of course, here are the miners. Uh, all too young to drink, of course, being miners. And here we have... Well, these guys are buddies. That's nice to see. This guy's got his gun, his bullet belt on, but... I mean, look at these guys. Obviously, these three guys are Caucasian. Oh, this guy looks like a bit of both. But these guys, this guy, <laughs> I don't know. You would not want to pass this guy in a dark alley, would you? Look at him. He's like, yeah, this used to be someone else's jacket. <laughs> um, this guy's falling asleep. But yeah, this is, uh, I don't know. This is... These are the natives, guys, back in the 1870s. You know, the people who were already there. And I don't know, what do you think? This is obviously a hundred, oh, a couple of hundred years after, you know, white man, the Caucasians first, you know, rediscovered and claimed the Americas. But a lot of these people, they're just not looking... Like, you know, the engines that we're told about. And of course, you know, that whole narrative, you know, how back in the 50s and 60s, they had everyone thinking, yeah, man, it's great to go out and kill engines. I mean, you look at all those old Wild West movies, 
Oh, they do always run around and shoot Indians. I mean, you want to know how the genocide was done? I think they're showing us. Another mining operation. Alright, so again, yeah, thanks for joining me. Here's uh, the last shot. And as you can see, look at all these people lined up I mean, in the middle of nowhere. We've got a few tents here. These people, I mean, look at this. They look like... I don't know, they look like they're, they're slaves. There's people standing up here. Looks like they might be the slave owners, you know, and these people looking very dark skinned. I would say these are the natives. These are the, whatever you want to call them, Atlanteans, Romans, uh, Washita, Murs. They're all the same kind, all the same people. And they were here. And they were the ones, or the ancestors were the, one, were the ones who built all those buildings that we just saw. They're sitting in a state of disrepair and they've just been, you know, invaded and had everything, including their dignity, stolen from them. And they're just left in loincloths uh, and used for photo opportunities. And this, this is still going on, guys. And when you really think about it, look at what's happening now, now especially with, you know, censorship and everything in the media. If you think back, you know, in the day when information wasn't as easy to get it all pretty much came from one source uh, much easier for them to censor and to change information and of course they were they you know owned and ran the education systems you know everything the food systems the medical systems so for them to insert a new uh, you know a new narrative and a new history wouldn't you know it's not that hard that it's not as hard as it, it seems when you think about it you think oh you put a wipe all this stuff out and that but not really no, you can go out and talk to people now about stuff that was going on 30 years ago and they have no clue. They, they seriously can't see anything past the last year or two. So it's not, I don't know that it's, it's as hard to change history as we actually think so. I think it is. It's, I think it's more, it's, it's a game, guys. It's a show. It's a facade. They just get in there and, and, and change the storyline. Then they act it out for us. And then they say, then they show us, right? They show us in their shows. They say, look at this. This is the truth. And that's where we get the decision to decide, you know, is it? Are we just going to follow this blindly? Are we going to get more information? Maybe it's not the truth. Maybe it's complete BS. You know, but it's, it's when you don't think and when you don't ask that question that uh, you've just relegated yourself to someone who's been programmed because quite obviously if we're only getting information from one place, we are being programmed. We're being told something. That's it. So, of course, his story is not our story, guys, and self-education is the way forward. So thanks for uh, joining me. I hope you enjoyed that little walk through 1870s USA on the West Coast. Lots of anomalies and lots of proof that the story they give us, his story, is complete and utter fraud. So have a, a fantabulous day, and I'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now.
भवती मस्तिहा 